Just like the rest of you for the past few days, I've been grinding the new Iranian F14. But as usual, I try to keep an eye on hot discussions inside the Steam from as well. I've said it before and I say it again. I intentionally try to stay away from Reddit. For one, I don't like Reddit and the culture surrounding it. Two, Reddit and Warfunder forums are infested by players with a sunk cause fallacy who will not hesitate to defend Gaijin no matter what wrong decisions they are making. Steam forums are a much more realistic representation of the average Warfunder audience, and that is why I only skim through Steam forums. Alright, the other day I stumbled upon this topic, written by the now banned user Osama bin Drippen, which is a cool name, but by no means original. Warfunder is borderline impossible to play during these trash events. Love getting spammed with nothing but under-tiered US planes and premium lineups game after game. With teams that do nothing but try to raise the amount of points they get before jumping, so they can use another premium lineup in a different nation. A truly disgusting loop Gaijin has crafted here that does nothing but take away from the players. Whether that be normal players that want to just play and grind normally, or players who want to try and grind this vehicle. Just to find out 45,000 points in 48 hours is borderline impossible to achieve and psychotic to ask for. Unless you have spent hundreds of dollars throughout your playtime along with thousands of hours to your name to ensure you have all your tech trees tier 4 to 5 and higher. So no, this quote unquote event, if you can truly even call it one, didn't just change how players would gain a unique vehicle. It has completely changed the game for the worse and the average player is punished the greatest. Alright, now I totally understand how this guy is feeling. All of us been there. We cannot love War Thunder without hating it the same amount. But as someone who wants this game to improve and constructive negative feedback to be heard, I'm obligated to some extent to stop these kind of baseless arguments right at the beginning. First of all, let me address this paragraph. I asked this dude to specify which planes of the US-3 are giving him trouble and how them being premium is affecting the whole situation. I got no answer back and this was his response. So I guess it was his own frustrations with the game somehow posing as a reasonable argument. Now the second paragraph. Listen, Warfunder is a free to play, pay to grind game. The whole basic premise of this game is either you trade your time for progression or you trade your money for progression. So to expect players that do not have higher tier vehicles to as easily get access to an event vehicle that could be sold probably around the price of a top tier premium pack is just crazy. The whole point of this setup in the event is to give easier access to unique vehicles to players who have already spent money on the game or played for a long time. Now I am totally down for lowering the price of the premium packs or easing the progression in higher tiers, but to somehow expect the company to have the moral high ground and give us stuff for free is just dumb man. Of course companies can be anti-consumer, as Gaijin showed many times before that they can be, and we rightfully call them out. But for the past few days, I keep seeing these kind of topics pop up. People warning others from fear of missing out or some cost fallacy, and how they shouldn't be grinding for this event. Like at some point, we have to take a step back, and realize that people have willpower and agency over their action. If Gaijin wants to make changes that affects everybody like higher repair costs, sure, I'll be the first one to rip through them. But to constantly whine and complain about a voluntary event is just nonsensical, dude. Now his other argument was that these events make people play the game differently and somehow lower the quality of the matches. Now I'm sure this event definitely changes a lot of the stuff. People will play higher tier planes, probably have a slight lean towards mid tier strike aircrafts or bombers like F3D or A2D or something. Me myself, I started playing Tornado ADV and F14A again after a long time. So almost anything that gives you mission points is in fact effective in your team getting an edge in terms of tickets. Killing plane AIs, ground pounding or even base bombing can be beneficial for your team. But PvP engagements in any shape or form still pay the most mission points. And people who are actually decent in fighting other players will for sure stick to fighting other players. So it creates this slippery slope that if someone is prioritizing engaging with ground targets instead of attacking enemy planes, is for sure much less of a competent player. So no, I don't think these events changed anything about the way the game gets played, apart from the fact that people will play certain planes or battle ratings more than others. The whole point from this video was, some of you folks need to finally understand this. There is no company in the free market that will do anything for you for free or out of goodwill. We already have seen the most popular cases. CD Projekt Red, after a masterpiece of a game, feature free gave us a disaster of a title like Cyberpunk with a lot of content cut out of it. Microsoft with its quote-unquote affordable game pass, bumped the price once it was popular enough. AMD with all their slogans about them caring about gamers, 
they bumped the prices once they could compete with Intel. Please stop thinking that any of these companies have a moral standard to keep that is outside of law or regulations. That way it is much easier to both not get addicted to grinding games and in return much better for your own mental health. Alright, that's it for today guys. Thanks for watching and be seeing ya.